Hi, I'm Gene Liu and I'm an otolaryngologist head and neck surgeon or ear, nose, and throat doctor here in Los Angeles. Today I wanted to talk about newborns and tongue tie. Now I was kind of naive. Before I had kids, I thought you would take a baby, you would take a breast, you stick the two together, and everything would go great. Now we love it when that happens, but obviously that isn't always the case. When it comes to whether a baby is tongue-tied, what we're looking at is the frenulum or frenum. It's that little band under the tongue. Everybody's got one, but there's going to be a lot of variability in the length, the width, the thickness of it. The main areas that I evaluate are whether or not that little flap under the tongue goes close to the tip. The closer it goes to the front, the more tethered or tied down it's going to be. And then the second is no matter where it attaches front to back, it's how far can you lift or stick out the tongue before it starts to snag or tie you down. There isn't a measurement that guarantees success or failure. So we can break out a ruler, we can measure the length of it, we can measure the height of it, we can measure the thickness, but ultimately there isn't a minimum requirement that guarantees, aha, you're going to be okay or not. Think of it like height in basketball. Right? In general, the shorter you are, the more athletic you're going to need to be, or the harder you're going to have to work, or the better technique you're going to have to have, or the more inherent athleticism to make the basketball team. Or, on the other end of the spectrum, the taller you are, the more you can be clumsy or lazy and still get away with it and make the team. But where's the cutoff? There isn't one specific measurement or height. When we're evaluating the baby's frenulum, though, we can sometimes tell if you're the equivalent of 5'2", chances are you're really going to struggle, and on the opposite end, if you're 7'2", mm, height's not the issue. In those first few days of life, it's always hard to know exactly what's going on because it's mostly just colostrum and very little breast milk. Additionally, babies are all losing weight for those first few days, so it's impossible to know if they're going to be able to gain weight and grow or not. Obviously, before you can make a decision of whether or not you do this little snip, you have to understand a little bit more about it. That little frenulum, that little flap of tissue, has nothing remotely important in it. There are no major blood vessels, no major nerves. It's just skin and maybe a tiny bit of muscle. To snip it takes about 5 or 10 seconds, and you can use any instrument, whether it's scissors or scalpel or laser or electrocautery. At the end of the day, they're all about the same. About 1% of the time, there can be some bleeding that requires intervention. If there's bleeding that doesn't stop with just holding pressure for a few seconds, we might reach in there with silver nitrate, a little chemical on a stick to cauterize it. If that happens, it's super quick and easy with minimal discomfort. When you do the actual snip, babies fuss for just a few seconds. It hurts about as much as accidentally biting your cheek. It's not dangerous in any way, and it's not worth any numbing medicines or pain medicines. Certainly afterwards, you're not giving the baby any pain medicine either. All the times you bite your cheek, it heals okay. You don't get stitches. You don't go running into the doctor. You don't take antibiotics. The mouth is very forgiving that way. Ultimately, for boys, a circumcision is an astronomically bigger deal. In girls, ear piercings are more dangerous. In the grand scheme of all the procedures that we do, when it comes down to releasing a tongue tie, which is called a frenulectomy or frenotomy, is as close to a nothing as we can get. The second you snip it, you're instantly removing the variable of the tongue tie. If it's the only problem, off you go, you're going to hit the ground running and be fine. If it's one problem out of many, at least you've eliminated that one piece. So I'm going to tell you a story about a patient I saw in the hospital about a year ago. Two days old, had a little bit of difficulty getting a latch, had slightly low muscle tone. Nobody was sure exactly how much of this was from the tongue tie and how much was from the other issue. When I went to see mom, mom seemed to recall that her nephew had something similar and asked if she could call the sister-in-law. I said, sure. Mom picked up her cell phone, called the sister-in-law right then and there, and asked about it. And sure enough, the baby did have some issues and had pain, prolonged feeding for a year. But the sister-in-law said, you know what? They kept telling me we should snip it. I showed them it didn't need to be done. We toughed it out for a whole year. We got through breastfeeding. Mom then seemed to remember something about speech therapy. Sister-in-law again said, yep, absolutely. He had some difficulty with the tip of the tongue sounds. We did a year of speech therapy. He has no speech therapy issues now. He's completely understandable. They kept telling me we needed to snip it. I showed them it didn't need to be done. Mom said, great hung up and said, holy cow, it might save me a year of painful breastfeeding and a year of speech therapy. Let's just snip it and get it over with and move on. 
At the end of the day, both kids did fine. They were able to gain weight and grow and have no speech issues. They took very different paths to get there, but both moms were happy with their individual choices. So ultimately, whether you snip or not, as long as these things are going okay, is up to you. On a more personal note, both of my kids had a lot of difficulty breastfeeding. We tried nipple shields, SNS systems, we had lactation consultants come to the house. They both had frangulums that were a little bit on the short side, but weren't dramatic. At the end of the day, I ended up snipping both of them and it made a big difference in how well they were able to latch and how the feeds were going. Ultimately though, it didn't fix everything, but it did help and eliminate that variable. I'm telling you my personal story about my kids, not to pressure you into doing anything to yours, but hopefully to alleviate some of the anxiety and stress if you are considering having it done. At the end of the day, there are times where it does make sense and I felt perfectly comfortable doing it to my own kids. I hope this video gave you some helpful information and a broad overview about newborns and tongue ties and how it may affect breastfeeding and when we make the decision to make a snip or not.